Hello guys and welcome back to Premier League predictions for another set of Premier League games coming this weekend that we are here to predict. I'm joined as always by Sophie. How are you? And you know what to do. Set us a like target. Yeah, I'm well, thank you. And I'm going to lower it this week. I'm saying 3.9k because we don't seem to be hitting 4k, so I'm going to have to lower it. Guys, we've asked for the last few weeks for 4,000 likes and we continuously get 3,700 or so. You can surprise us and try and hit 4,000, but we don't expect it anymore. Jokes aside, make sure to subscribe as well, guys, so you see all of our content on this channel. Channel. Thank you so much for your great support, by the way. The scores from last week in the Premier League, Sophie, you did beat me in the Premier League predictions, so fair play to you. Yes, thank you. I'm just trying to restore a healthier lead. Yeah, you beat me by two points. It was the Chelsea prediction that was a good one. Yeah, that was the winner. Let's get into the predictions then, Sophie, and we start with Newcastle United versus Arsenal. And this is an interesting one already. There's plenty of big games, by the way, this yeah. week. We've got quite a few six-pointers down at the bottom, and we've got some big games at the top. Now, this one, to me, you would make Arsenal the favourites, but it does smell of... A potential slip up because Newcastle have the home advantage. I know they lost 2 1 to Chelsea last time out, but when they're at home, they can turn it on. And Arsenal have not been quite hitting the standards they usually set. No. And they're missing players. Exactly. They're missing some key players in that defensive line. So, yeah, I don't know. I think a win at St James's Park right now is a big ask. If they don't get anything from this game, I think it's a bit of a stretch to say they're out of the title race, but it does look like the pressure's already on. There is a gap forming, mm. and a win here could really kickstart a good run. Yeah. It would give them a lot of confidence mm. and belief. And I think they could just do it. If they're made of title-winning stuff, which I think they could be, mm -hmm. they find a way. Yeah. I'm sorry, Newcastle, because I really like Newcastle, but I'm going to go Newcastle 1, Arsenal 2. OK, do you know what? I'm back in another Arsenal draw. Um, what we saw second half against Liverpool wasn't very inspiring. They actually like let them back into the game. It was almost like they were sitting back on the 2-1 and thought, do you know what, we'll just see the game out like this. But we've seen it a couple of times this season that the game, game management hasn't been perfect. Mm. Um, obviously, they're a very good team. And actually, for the first half, definitely, they looked much better than Liverpool. But, yeah, I guess you could say the same against Newcastle and Chelsea. Chelsea... Um, were the better team but I do fancy Newcastle more at home I'm going down the middle though 1-1 one, 1-1 one. One, one. share your thoughts on that one guys that could happen but Arsenal can't afford to drop points again they need to win but it won't be easy on to the next one Sophie where AFC Bournemouth take on Manchester City and this one's not easy for Man City um, look Man City have gone top because Arsenal drew with Liverpool which is exactly what they would have wanted and Man City beat Southampton mm -hmm. it was only 1-0 so yeah. not, not that convincing by Man City's standards but a win is a win and they take on Bournemouth and Bournemouth have been great what a great yeah. draw that is at Villa yeah. um, and the fact that they left it until the 96th minute to snatch it from that free kick limbs for the Bournemouth fans um, oh this is difficult because I don't want to go against Bournemouth because they have been good lately and they mm -hmm. beat Arsenal as well True. but I need points so I challenge you to back Bournemouth because you're winning already I'm going to go for Man City just Bournemouth nil Man City won Sorry, I am going for Man City because oh. also I need points. But I'm going to say Bournemouth 1, Man City 2. So I think Man City will just edge it. We've seen throughout this season that they're not absolutely turning teams over. And no offence to Southampton, but you would expect them at home to be beaten Southampton like 3 4 nil, And they're not. I know a lot of the stats were heavily in favour of Man City. There were a lot of chances they didn't take. But to only win 1-0... I think coming up against Bournemouth who right now they're in pretty good form so mm -hmm. especially at home as well I think Bournemouth could very much be in this game so I'm just going to edge Man City 2-1 sorry to be boring yeah you could just see Man City sneaking it but Bournemouth have been great lately they have. so yeah I want to give them credit if they can get a result it just opens up the title race to the others which would be yeah. better for the neutral to watch I'm sure um, on to the next one so this is huge at Portman Road Ipswich Town take on Leicester City and it is a six pointer there's yeah. plenty of big games this week um, and this one is where Ipswich have to win now mm. um, I'm not going to be overly dramatic and say if they don't win they're done they're relegated it's too early to say that it but it feels like it's got to be a 
turning point or a defining moment in their season. They can't lose it, but really they need to win it because they've not won this season. And mm -hmm. They were very unlucky against Brentford. It was a good performance and just when I thought, oh, they're actually going to win a game. Oh, they're going to get a point. And they get nothing from that game. It's heartbreaking when it was such a good performance. That is cruel because is. that's how the Premier League is. You can mm. play well and, and do well and just miss out on, on something in the last minute. So they've got to win. Leicester, they've been decent recently, but mm -hmm. not great in the second half against Forest. I thought in the first half they were I okay. I thought the first half, yeah. Uh, but Chris Wood found a way to get Forest the three points. And um, Leicester City have already had a couple of wins. If they win this, they really put a good gap between them and Ipswich. But you know me, Sophie. I like things to be interesting. Cool. So I'm going to go for Ipswich. But you better do it this time because I've backed you a few times and you've not done it. Ipswich 2-1. I think the home advantage could maybe be what just tips it. I'm going for a draw, but I think there could be a few goals. I'm going to say 2-2. Two, two. Um, yeah, as I said already, Ipswich, that was a very, very good performance against Brentford. Annoyingly, they didn't get anything. So if they can play like that against Leicester, who knows, they could win it. But again, they conceded a few. And if Leicester play like they did first half against Forest, that's why I think they could get a draw here. So yeah going down the middle but a Desmond 2-2 yeah, two -two. I like that that's exciting share your thoughts guys I mean Ipswich games have been pretty crazy this season <laughs> especially been. that one against Brentford yeah. um, the next one Sophie is Liverpool versus Brighton they've both obviously played each other in the Carabao Cup this week um, and last time out in the Premier League Sophie it was 2-2 two -two draws for both of them yeah. um, Liverpool got a draw at Arsenal which feels like Probably a better result for them than Arsenal, mm. um, especially because they had to come from behind twice. Yeah. Brighton absolutely threw it away against Wolves. Um, they're a good team. I think they're going to score, but I'm going to do the same prediction I did for the Carabao Cup game. Liverpool 2, Brighton 1. Yeah, what I'd said in the Carabao Cup video is that that was the worst I've seen Liverpool play this season. And like even despite losing to Forest earlier on I still think that performance against Arsenal for the majority was quite a bad performance but they still got a draw from it they still managed to get a draw and ultimately that was a point and basically stopping Arsenal getting all three so yeah Brighton let me down a little bit actually because I'd backed them to win 2-1 and they they cost me a few points so a little bit disappointed I'm gonna say 2-1 Liverpool I fancy them being the home side I do think Brighton might get a goal though and I think it could be an interesting game but I'm gonna say Liverpool get back to winning ways especially being the home side there you go share your thoughts guys both going for Liverpool probably as to be expected but if Man City drop points Liverpool can go back to top mm. of the table with a win and um, the next one Sophie is Nottingham Forest versus West Ham both with great wins last weekend. Um, let's start with Forest, Sophie. We did both back them to beat Leicester. Mm -hmm. They won 3 1 in the end. Um, Chris Wood Chris is Wood. a machine. I know, and someone triple captained him as well. Who would do that? Yeah, yeah. get Chris <laughs> Wood. A Forest fan. Get Chris Wood in your fantasy football team yeah. now. Bagsman. Also, the defence deserves a lot of credit. Yeah. Milenkovic is looking really good. Him yeah. next to Murillo. I think the keeper's solid. Um, yeah, he's just moving along really nicely. And it, it, it's great to see how far they've come. Mm -hmm. Forest fans, get your passport sorted because you're going on a European tour. Uh, no, let's talk about West Ham before we do a prediction, Sophie. Mm -hmm. Because West Ham got a great win against Manchester United. They did. And we apologise because we did not back you last week. Yes. Um, but West Ham have been a bit up and down this season, so maybe you can understand that. I'm really pleased Somerville got a goal, which is great to see. And yeah. they snatched it in stoppage time, um, which you love to see. Um, oh, this is tough. I think Forest have actually been better away than they have been at home this season, which is a bit yeah. strange. Um, oh, I, I guarantee Chris Wood will score. And that defence is really impressing me. Mm. It could be a 1-0 Forest. I think that's what I'm going to go for. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're yeah. copying me. No, I'm not copying you because I already had it in my head. But yeah. yeah. So, as you mentioned, Forest defence has looked very, very good. And before West Ham's game against Man United, they haven't looked as good, to be honest. It was a very, very good result against Man United. Big three points. They're now pretty much sitting level with Man United. But Forest are more in form at the moment. You've got to say that I know they're not as good at home but who knows this could be the turning point so yeah I'm throwing it out there 1-0 yeah same, same. yeah and yeah. they beat Palace 1-0 in their last home game so maybe True. they'll start building on that and honestly this is really impressive from Nottingham Forest yeah. they are flying 
On to the next one, Sophie. The next game is Southampton versus Everton. And once again, I feel like I'm saying this every time Southampton have a home game. They've got to win. They've got to They've win. They've got to win this one. Um, yeah. As we mentioned in the Carabao Cup predictions video the other day, that 1-0 defeat to Man City is Southampton's best result this season. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not trying to be patronising. That is something they can maybe build on. But Everton, Everton are doing all right, and they're picking up results. They didn't win against Fulham, but they did snatch a late draw. Yeah, snatch and a they're draw. keeping moving. I know they've got a decent little gap above the bottom three, but if they lose this kind of game, then Everton will slide back into trouble. So I think they need to make sure they go there and not lose, and preferably win. And, um, oh, it's hard to say. Russell Martin needs a result. He does. I'm going to go Southampton 1, Everton 2. See, I was going to say that, but I don't know if McNeil is going to be injured for this one. Obviously, he went off last game, so hopefully for Everton and for him, it's nothing serious. But, yeah, he's been very, very good for them so far this season. I know he didn't score against Fulham, but before that, he's been in very, very good form. Do you know what? I'm going to give Southampton the draw. I think that was a good result against Man City to not concede too many, because obviously their goal difference has taken a hit a few times this season. Everton, I do tend to back them to win against like, the teams around them when they need to win. Sean Dyche manages to get the players fired up and does manage to get something from it. But I don't give Southampton enough, so I'm going to give them a draw in this one. 1-1. One, one. It wouldn't massively suit them, but it's not losing to the teams around them. So Yeah, um, it just feels like them. they've got to win now, though. Yeah, they're, they're so far behind already. They've got to start winning to, mm. to catch up with teams that are above that bottom three. Um, yeah, share your thoughts. The next one is also a massive game down at the bottom as Wolves host Crystal Palace. It's the two biggest underperformers this season because these two, you've got to admit it, are established Premier League teams. They've both been in the Premier League for over five years now. I mean, Palace have been up there for over ten years now. Yeah. Um, but they've both had slow starts. But... Last week, for both of them, there were signs of promise. Exactly. Let's start with Palace, because they actually won. They won on the Sunday against Spurs. Mateta got the goal and saw it out. three well, points, a Palace. clean sheet, yeah. brilliant. It would feel like they're going back to square one if they lose this game, but mm -hmm. it'd feel the same for Wolves, who will be on a bit of a high after that result against Brighton. I mean, they looked dead and buried. They were 2-0 yeah. down with two minutes to go. They pull one back and you're thinking it's probably a consolation. Mm -hmm. And then there's a four on one and they somehow get the ball <laughs> oh, no. and they go down the other end yeah, and yeah. it deflects in. And those Wolves fans, that those limbs that, were amazing. Yeah, that was insane. You love to see it in the away end, just erupt. Yeah. yeah, honestly. And considering Wolves have been on the wrong end of some of those late goals, mm -hmm. I'm really pleased for them. And I really hope it's a turning point. I was about to say, could it be a turning point? <sighs> this is difficult, Sophie. Um, Palace got their win last week, so Wolves need to get their win. Wolves have had some really difficult games lately, and their fixtures are going to start getting a bit kinder now. Oh, this is hard. Um, oh, jeez. Wolves 2-1. I'm going for the exact same. Yeah, oh. Wolves 2-1. I, I really thought you'd go for a draw. I thought you'd struggle to separate the two. I think this. I think the last game where they managed to snatch a draw against Brighton, I think that could be the turning point in their season. And the, was that the goal that has saved Gary O'Neill? I think possibly. Um, Maybe. I do like, yeah, I do like Gary O'Neill, though. I think give him, give him more time. He's got enough credit in the bank. But, yeah, I think it could be a turning point at home. Come on, the fans have got to be more fired up now as well because it has been a little bit, not depressing, I think that's a bit strong, but <laughs> they've, they've not really had anything to cheer about, have they? So to get that last minute equaliser, to now build on that, I think they're capable. I feel a little bit harsh going against Palace because that was a good result, but then maybe you could say Spurs weren't really at it on their day. So yeah, I think Wolves are going to get their first win, 2-1. There you go, go for okay, the, get the same. Yeah. Difficult one to predict, though, I must be honest, because mm. Palace got a great win last time, so yeah. they might build on it. On to the next one, Sophie. It's Tottenham versus Aston Villa. Um, this is a massive game in the race for fourth place because these head-to-heads can decide it by the end of the season. Villa, let's be honest, they've been the more impressive team. They're flying in the Premier League and in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. They will be disappointed with the late goal they conceded against Bournemouth. Mm. But I don't think they should be coming here fearing anything. If anything, 
you know, if I was a Tottenham fan, I might be a little bit worried about this. Yeah. Um, but Tottenham are so up and down. I mean, yeah, no. who else in the Premier League smashes West Ham 4-1 and then loses 1-0 to Palace mm. the next week who hadn't won a game yet? Spurs are weird. Um, oh, do you know what? I make Villa slight favourites. Yeah. I'm going to give Spurs something, though, because they've got the home advantage. I'm okay. going to go 1-1. Uh, yeah, I guess you don't know which Spurs team is going to turn up. Is it going to be the one against West Ham or is it going to be the one against Palace? Um, do you know what? I'm going to back the away side, actually. I think Villa are going to get back to winning ways. Right now, yeah, I just fancy them slightly more. So, close game, but Villa just edge it for me 2-1. Yeah, I thought you were going to go that oh, way. Did you? I was tempted to go for 2 1 Villa myself. Oh, we can't be copying each other again. Villa fans, as always, like I say, look out for the Champions League predictions coming on Sunday where we could talk about Villa being top of the Champions League. Look out for that video. Make sure to subscribe. The next one, Sophie, is Manchester United versus Chelsea. Um, now, both played on the Sunday in the Premier League last time. Yeah. Manchester United lost 2 1 in stoppage time to West Ham and. They're struggling for wins, Sophie. They yeah. need to, to improve in the Premier League. It would be typical that they win because Manchester United can play well occasionally. That's what frustrates True. us. Yeah. That's what frustrates... They can turn up in big games as well, can't they? Exactly. That's what frustrates the Manchester United fan base. Mm. You know, there's the capability to be better, but they only seem to do it when they want. Um, whereas Chelsea... They've been a more consistent team this season under Maresca, and I think they might snatch this. Um, as I say, I wouldn't be surprised if Man United win, but Man United won, Chelsea 2. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to lean more towards the away side as well. It'd be interesting to see if Jaden Sancho starts and how he performs. I'm going to say 3-1 Chelsea. I Ooh. think they, I think they could put a few past them, you know. So, yeah, I'm going quite heavily in favour of Chelsea. Yeah, and Cole Palmer scored again last week. That's not Shock. a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chelsea are doing really well, so you can understand why we are backing them to beat Man United. By the way, I must add the disclaimer that myself and Sophie did record these Premier League predictions on Monday. Since then, Ten Hag did get sacked, and Ruud van Nistelrooy, as interim boss, got a good win against Leicester City in midweek in the Carabao Cup. So, um, while we're still probably going to just stick with the Chelsea predictions for now... It makes me think Manchester United might win. They've changed the manager. Anything's possible. Share your thoughts down below. On to the final game then, Sophie. And it's the Monday night game. It's a West London derby between Fulham and Brentford. Two very mid-table teams. Two teams that just always seem to do quite well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to call this. I mean, Fulham, last time they drew 1-1 with Everton. They'll be really yeah. frustrated to have kind of thrown two points away there. I thought they played quite well, to be honest. They did. Um, and Brentford, they were on the right end of a last-minute goal because they snatched three points against Ipswich in a completely bonkers game, 4-3. Um, oh, this is a difficult one. I quite like both of these teams. Mm. I think both teams are going to score. And do I go for Fulham 2-1? No, I'm going to go down the middle. Going to go 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I'm going for a 1-1 one, one as well. Ugh. Yeah, no, I just... When you say the teams, I'm thinking... It really could go either way, and that is why I'm going down the middle. I think both teams on their day are more than capable of winning this one, and I think that's why they might cancel each other out. So, yeah, I agree with you again. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, and credit to these teams, because it is so hard to consistently be clear of trouble in the Premier yeah, League. Yeah, it is. And yeah. we're seeing Wolves and Palace this season getting Shocking. drawn into mm. trouble. But these two are keeping their heads above water and they deserve full credit. It could be a decent game. Share your thoughts on that one because that now does wrap up the Premier League predictions for another week, guys. Like I say, get your predictions down in the comments. Copy and paste from the description and we will look out for your predictions. And um, thank you, as always, for your great support. If you haven't already hit the like button, Feel free to do so. We're only going for 3,900 likes this time. Yeah. And of course, please make sure you are subscribed as well. Your support is amazing. Thank you once again for joining me, Sophie. Thank you. We will see you in the next one. Take care. Peace out.